God bless you. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you for that ministry uh, and song that God still loves me. I'm not perfect. And that was so true. And many of us can testify to uh, that reality. So thank you so much for uh, using your gift to uh, bring out the expressions of that song. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, how we thank you and praise you. And bless you for this day that you've granted unto us. And we pray now, Lord, that you will uh, be with us as we look into your word, that you would speak Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Forgive us for where we have sinned against you. Lord, help us to do better. Thank you, God, for this day. And we pray now that you would encourage us through your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in <clears throat> this morning. We bless the Lord so much for you, and thank you for uh, your support during the, this pandemic over uh, these several months. And um, we are looking forward to uh, us gathering again and um, did the first COVID shot here at the church on last Sunday or last Saturday. Uh, two Saturdays from now, we will do them again uh, at the small church, 2815 South Irve, and uh, you can just show up, and uh, even if it's your first shot, you can come, and then we will let you know uh, where you will need to go to do your second shot, <clears throat> but if it is your, if you did the first shot, we look forward to seeing you for the second shot, and then two weeks after that, uh, it is uh, stated that we are fully vaccinated two weeks after your second shot. And then we are working with our leaders for our reopening plan. And so looking forward to us coming together in worship <clears throat> as we serve God together as a family. But God has been so faithful, and you've encouraged us so much to continue the fellowship of, uh, with one another online and calling and visiting in small groups. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Today we want to call your attention to Psalm 130. Psalm 130 as we continue this section through the songs of ascent, the songs of ascent. Psalm 130, out of the depths. Psalm 130, there's a superscription that tells you what this was and it was a song of ascent that they would sing on their way to worship, a song of ascent as they would make their way to uh, Jerusalem. Verse 1, out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of my sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, serve you. As we journey through this section of uh, Psalms, as we began several weeks ago, the Songs of Ascents, we've been working from the theme, the overarching theme, the songs my mother would sing on the way to church, as these Israelites would sing songs on their way to Jerusalem to worship three times a year, uh, as they would make their way over their mountains in the valleys to get to Jerusalem to have some, to, to, to meet with one another and ultimately to meet with God. And so as we've gone through songs that my mother sang on the way to church, the day out of Psalm 130, Psalm 130, the song would have been, look where he brought me from. Look where he brought me from, brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Testimony as they would be on their way to worship, as they would be on their way to serve God, to praise God, to give God the glory for all the things that God had done for them. A reflection of God's faithfulness to them in spite of their unfaithfulness. God had been faithful to them in spite of their unfaithfulness. 
So the song would have been as they mama would go to worship, mama would go to church, a reminder of where God had brought them from, brought them from dark situations, hard situations, situations in despair. But God had brought them out. And not only had God brought them out, God had brought them out all right. He had brought them out all right. Look where he brought me from. As the psalmist writes, as we said, they were on their way to worship, and the congregation would be making their journey together, and they would sing this psalm, because the psalms, as we have said, are just hymn books. Hymn books. It's a hymnal of the writing of the psalmists as they would express their appreciation and thanksgiving for all that the Lord had done. And the psalm, Psalm 130, begins recognizing how they had cried out to God in their plight how they had cried out to God in their situation, how they would, had cried out to God in some very difficult and tough times in their lives. You, you can see, you can see the writer's hardship. You can see the writer's despair. Because he begins this psalmist, he says, out of the depths. Yes, yes, that, and, and you know what the depth is, don't you? It's a low place in your life, yeah, and, and, and the psalmist, remembering where God ha has brought him from, recognizes that God had brought him out of some dark and low places in his life. And, and, and many of us can testify, if we are honest with ourselves, that, that we have been to some very low places. We, we've done things in our lives that, 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 that we are ashamed of. We have done some things in, in our lives that we embarrass of. We have done some things in our lives that, that we hope nobody else will ever find out about. That's why I, I can't spend time talking about the skeletons in somebody else's closet because if I'm honest with myself, I've got some stuff that, that I've done in my own life. The psalmist says, I've been down to some, I, I've been down to some low places. Yeah, I, I, I've been down. In fact, the depths is, the, the depths is some low places. You know what he says? I, I, I found myself in life where, where I hit rock bottom. I, I hit rock bottom. It's a reminder. As the psalm is writing, Psalm 40, you, 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 you've heard the psalm, I waited patiently in Psalm 40, Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and, and heard my cry. Listen, listen, in verse 2, he lifted me up out of, the, out of a slimy pit. Look, look, I, I, a slippery sliding slope that I found myself in. No, notice where he lifted me out. He, he lifted me out of the muck and the mouth. Now, now, you know what the muck in the miry clay is, don't you? The, 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 the muck is the mud. I, I've been in some dirty places. Yes, I've been in some, I, I found myself in, in, in a mess. I've been right there, he said. And not only did he lift me up out of the muck, he lifted me up out of the miry clay. And, and the miry clay is on a farm. Yes, yes, there was animal manure. And if you don't know what manure is, Google it. Yeah, I done found myself in some manure. Yes, 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 I, I found myself in some deep doo-doo. Yeah, for, for lack of a better word. Yeah, and, and the psalmist says, I've been right there. Yes, yes, I... I found myself in the midst of a despair. I found myself in some low places. I found myself at rock bottom. I found myself in the midst of the pit. I found myself in a dirty situation. I found myself in some manure. I found myself in a bad mess. Yes. 
Yes, and, when you, and many of you can relate. When you've been in that situation, when you've been in a situation where you've made mistakes, when, when you've been in that situation where, where, where you are now in the school of hard knocks, when you've been in that situation that you are ashamed of, Yes, yes, and notice, he, he says, it, it, I was in the depths. I was way down. Yes, when you feel, when you feel like you've been way down, when you've been way down, when you've been, when, when you feel yourself way down in despair, you feel like you alone, isolated, distant from everybody else. Feel like nobody understands you. Yes, yes, and the kind of party you have in those situations are called pity party. Yes, feel like nobody else can understand. Nobody else knows what I'm going through. And embarrassment, shame. Palmer says, if you've been right there, you been, ain't been there by yourself. I know what it is. Yes, I've had those difficult times. I, I've had situations that, that were insurmountable. I, I never thought that I could never get myself out of that jam. But you know what the psalmist helps us to understand? When you are in despair, when you are in a dark place, when, when you hit rock bottom, when you hit rock bottom, when you hit rock bottom, that's the best time to understand and discover that there is a rock at the bottom. What did I do when I hit that discouragement? What did I do? No, I didn't go around feeling sorry for myself. I didn't stay right there in the muck, in the mud, in the mire, in the manure. You know what I did? I looked up. I cried out to my God. I looked up. I said, God, if I ever needed you before, I sure do need you now. I cried out to God, God, here I am as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Here I am, God, if I ever needed you before, I sure do need you now. Here I am, God, make a way for me, come through for me, fix it for me, turn it around for me. Because God in that time, when I recognize that you were all that I had, I realize you were all that I need. I cried out to you, Lord, the idol now, the one that's over all. And God, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about this. God, I need you to hear my voice. And I can imagine the psalmist says, I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my cry. Pitied every groan. Long as I live while trouble rise, I'm going to hasten to your you don't need to waddle in the mud, in the manure. You don't have to stay right there. I, I know you've made mistakes. I know you've gone astray. I, I know you're embarrassed by some of the stuff you do. I know you got skeletons or even a corpse in your closet. Yeah. Lord, I need you to. Hear my voice. Don't turn a deaf ear to me. God, my, my prayer is you would pass me not on gentle Savior. I, I want you to hear my, my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. Please, God. Don't pass me by. 
I know I'm in a bad situation. And you know what the psalmist says? I'm in a bad situation, and it ain't nobody's fault but mine. I, I recognize that I'm the one that caused me to be in this situation. I'm the one that caused me to be in this depth. I'm the one that caused me to be in the muck. I'm the one that caused me to be in the mire. That's why I need you to let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. Notice, he doesn't ask for grace. Because grace is when God gives me, which I didn't deserve. Mercy is when God withholds from me some stuff that I should have got. God, I need you to have mercy. Remember the story of blind Bartimaeus, blind blind Bartimaeus. As he cries out, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, I'm in this situation, and I don't have nobody else to blame but myself. Lord, have mercy. God, I recognize because of my hard headed. Mom and them told me not to do that. But I was determined I was going to do it anyway. I, I knew better. My conscience, the Holy Spirit, what was talking to me, saying, don't go there. Don't do it. Stay away. God, I need you to have mercy. Listen, as I go back a few verses, a few, uh, few chapters in the book of Psalms, the Psalm 103, listen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my, in all my innermost being. Bless his holy name. Pray, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are some of the benefits? He forgives us our sins. He heals us of our diseases. He redeems our life from the pit. He, he crowns us with, with love and compassion and, and satisfies your desires with, with good things. God, I need your New Testament, John chapter 8, you know the story. Story goes, chapter 8, a woman is caught in the very act of adultery. She's caught in the very act of adultery. Guilty. Teachers of the law comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, the law says that woman should die. Jesus says, you know what you show is right. That's what the law says. That's exactly what the law says. And as he recites the law to them, chapter 8, verse 6 says, he bent down and started to write in the ground on his finger, with his finger. This woman caught in the very act of adultery, he sits down and writes on the ground with his finger. What is he writing? We don't know. Group of men are there. Maybe he wrote things like Shanae Things like, I'm trying to think of some girl names that's not members of our church because they're going to show where well, I'll call it about. Maybe he was just writing a bunch of women's names, just randomly down. 
and then it, and, and then he 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 stands up, he straightens up, and says, "Notice what he says to them: Let he, anyone who was out sin, cast the first stone. She ought to die." Now, there's a misunderstanding of what that means. Many of us read, and the text says, let he that is without sin. Well, that really doesn't make sense because Jesus all knows that all of us have sinned and recognized that nobody would have ever been able to throw a stone. And so the idea is not he who was out sin. The point he was making is he who was without this sin. Now, she got caught. And just because you don't get caught don't make yours no better than nobody else's. He wrote down again. And you know what the text says? At this, when they heard, he who was without, and they probably knew he was talking about them because he was writing the name down. And if you notice the text, at this, those who heard it begin to go away. They begin to leave. And notice how they left. The older ones first. You know why the older ones left first? Because they had done it more than anybody else. And you see what the text says in Psalm 130. Lord, I need you to have mercy. When that woman was left, you know what Jesus says to her? Where your cue? Where them folk got? They're not around. Jesus says, I don't accuse you. I'm going to give you some mercy. But I'm going to tell you something. Go and sin no more. Now, Jesus knew that we all sin. We sin every day. He was not telling her to go and never do another sin. Don't get caught up in this lifestyle. I gave you mercy. God is a merciful God. How do you know that? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, you know what he says? I know you messed up. Come on. Come on. Come on. I, 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 I know what you did all week long. I, I know. Nobody else knows. I, I know the way up sites you went to. I know the conversations you had. I, I know when you were saying you were going to get some cigarettes. That ain't where you was going. I, I know all of that. But I'm going to tell you, let us come, chapter 4, verse 16 of Hebrews, boldly to the throne of grace, that that you can receive grace and find mercy to help you. You need some mercy. There's some stuff I could have done to bust the hell up out of you. But I'm giving you something that you should have, I'm withholding from you something that you should have got. You should have got. You should have been dead, sleeping in. And you know why you should have been dead? Because there were other folk that did what you did and they in their graves. The fact that you wake up every morning, you ought to thank God for mercy because there are those who did what you did. Yeah. Mercy. Jeremiah would write in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, chapter 23, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. The steadfast of the Lord's love never ceases. His mercies never fail. Great is his. This is my cry. And you know what folk 
oftentimes will say, you got what you had coming to you. You got what you deserve. And you know, it's easy for people who didn't get caught to stand in judgment on those who did get caught. Yes. As I remind ourselves, be careful how you talk about unwed mothers who had multiple sets of children. Just because you aborted yours don't make you no better. You just as guilty. And see, it's easy for us to start talking about all the stuff other folk have done. In fact, the psalmist goes, Lord, if you, Lord, if you, because, see, a lot of folk don't know. If you were to keep a record of all the stuff I've done, and if you were to keep a record of sins, who could stand? You see, just because you sin differently than me don't mean you don't sin. And see, we can keep good records. But if God was able, if God was keeping record, if God was keeping record, who could stand? You see, because the Bible is clear, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned. All. Not y'all. All. All of us are in need of God's mercy. So, so the, the, the story goes, you've heard it said before, justice and mercy. Justice is when I get what I deserve. Mercy is when God withholds from me what I should have got. Story goes, justice and mercy was talking one day, and they was going to go on their, their separate ways, but they were going to meet up the next day at noon. And, and, and just to say it's mercy, now we're supposed to meet up at noon, and we're going to go on a trip, but you need to make sure you on time, because you always show up late. You always show up late, Justice, and I need you to be on time this time, because see, now, if we miss this flight, we're going to miss our vacation. Justice showed up on time. Mercy could not be found. Hour later, Justice was waiting. Still no mercy. Two hours later, Justice was there. Still no mercy. Three hours later, Justice was there. Still no mercy. Afternoon time came. Justice was still waiting. Mercy, nowhere to be found. Went on from noon all into the evening. Justice was there, but mercy was nowhere to be found. Mercy could not be found. Couldn't reach mercy on the cell phone. Couldn't. He tried to email him, tried to text him. No mercy. About midnight. Here come Mercy. Wet. Smelling like fire. Clothes all torn. He was a mess. Justice said, now I ask you to be on time, Mercy. 
you was not, where, where, where you been all this time? He says, you know what, I was on my way. I was on my way. I, I was going to make good time. But as I was making my way to you, I had to go through the Garden of Eden. And then when I went through the Garden of Eden, there was two individuals named Adam and Eve there. They, they had eaten up some fruit that God had told them not to do. They should have lost their lives. But they said, Lord, have mercy. And I had to go show up and see about it. I was on my way. I, I was on my way. And I, I, the reason why I'm so wet now, because I was on my way. And there were some children, some, some children that found themselves with Pharaoh's army behind them, a Red Sea before them. And, and there was nowhere to run, nobody to hide. And they had a Lord. I had to hold the water back so they could walk across on dry ground. You want to know why I smell like smoke? I, 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 there were some boys. There were some boys. There were some boys. They were in a fiery furnace, and they, 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 they thought they were going to burn up. In fact, those who put them in there did burn up, and I was on my way, but, but I heard those three boys say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah. You want to know my clothes tore up because they was, uh, uh, I had a servant in the lines then, and he asked, Lord, have mercy, and I had to show up. A little shaky because there was Paul and Silas in jail. Yeah, yeah. They had nobody to throw their bait. But they cried, Lord, have mercy. Lord, if you kept a record, if you kept the record, if you kept the record of who could stand? Now I know you like to gossip about folk. What if God kept record on you? I know you like to put folk on black. What if God put you on black? Because see, now God does know about you. See, many of us love us, love you because of what we think we know about you. But God loves you and he knows all about you. Let me run back here you, again, back to Psalm 103. Let me just run back there for a moment. And let me, let me, let me tell you what the psalmist writes in Psalm 103. Listen what he said. Verse 10. He does not treat us as our sin deserves. Or repay us according to our iniquity. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west. As the east is from the west. As the east is from the west. Notice he doesn't say from the north to the south. You know why? Because, see, you know where the North Pole is. And if my sins was there, you'd be up there trying to find mine. But ain't no East Pole and West Pole. Never to bring them up. So far he has removed our transgressions. If you, Lord, kept a record of my wrong. You could build a whole library. Yeah, God, I know I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? Interesting about God, the psalmist brings out. But with you, verse four. There is forgiveness. If you was in Sunday school this morning, missed another good, sun, another good Sunday school lesson as we talked about Sardis. And Brother Ernest reminded us Sardis was a jacked up church. It was a messed up church. They had made a whole lot of mistakes. They, they walked around 
painting themselves to hide their ugly. Not to highlight as he brought out their beauty, but to cover up their ugly. They was messed up. And you and I probably would have just kicked Sardis to the curb, washed our hands. I ain't fooling with them fakers and shakers no more. Fake folk in the church. But you know what he reminded us? As messed up as Sardis was, God still wanted something to do with Sardis. He tells them, I want something to do with y'all. Hit rewind sometime on the message from Sunday school. But let me just give you the five things, little nuggets he threw at them. Number one, you need to wake up. Number two, you need to be, get about doing God's business. Number three, he reminded us, you need to remember from whence you've come. Number four, you need to obey God's word. And number five, you need to repent. Lord, with you, there is forgiveness. You see, if you kept a record of wrong, God, you could fill volumes with my mistakes, volumes with my sin. But with you, there is forgiveness. Listen to this song that Hezekiah writes. Calling my name. You need to listen to the words. YouTube it. And listen to the words of the song. How many times do I go against your will? Then you forgive. But yet I still turn around and do the things I shouldn't do. Because I belong to you. And I know you will come through. Lord, I know I take advantage of your grace here in this Christian race. But yet, I still hear you calling my name. Sing this song, Chester D.T. Baldwin. I've gone contrary to your will and way. Seems like I make mistakes. I make them every day. But you saw in me what I could be. I'm so glad. I serve a God of another chance. You forgave me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I want to do better. You're a God of another chance. <clears throat> so God, because you forgave a wretch like me, a wretch like me, a wretch like me. Notice, I got a reference. I, 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 so that now we can, with reverence and respect and appreciation, serve you. God, I ain't got the big head. Because I know what you had to do for me. Let me tell you what he did. He brought a change in my life. He brought a change in my life. See, God, 
God, you brought that forgiveness in my life, and I thank you for it. Didn't deserve it. But I thank you for the change that your forgiveness brought. And all I had to do was confess John 1, 1 John 1, 9, my sins, and you were faithful to just to forgive me and, and to cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. You brought a change. Verse 5, I had to wait. I waited on the Lord. My whole being waits, and, and I put my hope in you. I, I waited for the Lord more than a watchman waits for morning. I waited on God. More, notice what he repeats, more than a watchman Wait for morning. See, a watchman, security guard, had to work overnight. But he couldn't wait till morning came because, see, when morning came, a change was going to come. He get to go home, get to enjoy life. But he had to wait. And you know what? He couldn't hurry the night away. He had to go through the process. God, because of my sins, I'm going to go through the process. But I'm going to wait till the change comes. Because, see, when the change comes, if you had to work overnight, you get some relief in the morning. That's why the psalmist writes, weeping endures for the night, but relief, joy, comes in the morning. You know what? Night is going to be night, and it's going to be night as long as it's going to be night. And all you can do is wait. Psalmist writes, wait on the Lord, Psalm, 1, Psalm 27, verse 14. Be of courage, courage. I encourage you to wait on the Lord. You know Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I waited. Because when God showed up, even in the midst of my depths of my sin, a change was going to come. That's a word for somebody who's been in a mess a long time. Hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. A change is going to come. If you make that turn, go and sin no more. Don't mean you're perfect, but I can certainly be doing better. Psalmist writes and realizes as they are traveling this message, this, this journey about God bringing a new day in their life as they wait on God and his mercies are new each morning. The psalmist encourages Israel as they're going up this mountain to these believers. You know what you need to do? You need to stop trusting in folk. Because let me tell you something, folk will let you down. You've been trusting in an administration. You know what? <laughs> administration going to let you down. Oh, yeah, they'll let you down. It's all about their political expediency. It ain't about you. Put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, number one, is unfailing love. God does not provide fickle love. With the Lord is unfailing love. Unfailing love. 33 years at pastoring at Cornerstone. I've had the pleasure of doing some weddings. We come here on, usually on a Saturday, sometimes during the week, give up my time. No problem, love it. No, it's part of the job, responsibility of the ministry. Don't mind. Don't mind. Every now and then I'll buy a gift. 
And that individual, those, that couple will stand before me and, I, and, and, and we'll say, realizing you make this covenant between you and God, do you love, promise to obey, I mean promise to love, honor, and cherish? To death do you part? Yes, sir. I'll turn to the bride and say, do you take your husband to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love, to honor, as long as you, and, and they'll say, yes, man. Never before have they been before my presence in, in, in my 32 years and says, you know what, Chris, I'm going to do it. For a little while. They make a commitment. I'm going to do this, God. I'm going to do this, Chris. To death do your part. But you know what I discovered? Some of them lie. They lie. Because they end up at ju judge before Judge Maybelline. They lie. You said you was going to have unfailing love. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for sickness and in health. Tell death, you lie. But with, notice the text, with the Lord, he loves you when you're good. He loves you when you're bad. He loves you when you're happy. He loves you when you're sad. He never stops loving. Not only is him with unfailing love, but notice what the text goes on to say. With him is, is full redemption. He paid it all. In fact, a couple of months ago when we were celebrating Easter, we did the last seven sayings on the cross. And you know what one of the say? It is been paid for. Jesus paid it all. All to him all. With him, Jesus didn't put you on the layaway plane. He paid it all and said, give me my merchandise. I'm getting them out of this. Full redemption. How did he do it? How did he do it? How did he bring you out of this mess? Notice verse 8. He himself. Let me tell you one of the ways that I know Jesus, God is Jesus, come in the flesh, as it says in Philippians chapter 2. Being in the form of God, he did not take considerate robbery with God, but made him himself a servant. You know, the, the, one of the ways you know that Jesus Christ was God who showed up because God wanted it done right. So he said, I'll just do it myself. He himself, he himself redeemed Israel, notice, from all. You ain't got to stand guilty of any of those things. A friend of mine posted this week on Facebook, Jesus dropped the charges. I wrote a reply. He didn't drop the charge. He paid the price. It's easy to drop the charges. There's a whole lot of difference when you got to pay the price. As they were on their way to worship, these pilgrims were saying, look where he brought me from. Out of darkness. No places in my life. In the mud and the manure. Stinking. Nobody wanted to be bothered with me. 
Folks said I wasn't going to make it, and they was probably right. But I cried unto God. He heard my cry. Pitied every groan. Long as I live, my trouble rise. Brought me out of darkness. And you know what the next verse said? Because of what he's done, I'm going to praise his name. Because he brought me out of darkness. I'm a reverence you. But how you forgave, change me, redeem me, save me. Look what the Lord has done. Thank you, God, for all you've done for us. So unworthy, messed up, tore up from the floor. Should have been on our way to hell. Folk did what we did and they're not here today. But you look beyond my fault to see my need. I want to bless you. You've been so good to us. I praise you in Jesus' name.